classmates to successfully build an electronic candle with a breadboard. What conditions are required? The design circuit is correct. The components used are intact. The connecting wires are intact. The assembly is correct. These are all essential conditions. So, how do we determine if an integrated operational amplifier is intact? Let's move on to learning about measuring integrated operational amplifiers. The teaching objectives of this section are one. To be able to measure the pins of an integrated operational amplifier and determine if they are good or bad, two, to state the four main conditions of an ideal operational amplifier. Let's first watch a video to briefly understand the internal structure and function of an operational amplifier. Today, I would like to share with you a very magical electronic transport device, an amplifier. This it is said to be magical because it can amplify the input V1 signal tens of thousands of times. Next, let's talk about what an amplifier is. The full name of amplifier is operational amplifier, abbreviated as Yunfang. Why it is called an operational amplifier? It's because at the beginning, it is mainly used in analog operation circuits such as addition, subtraction, differentiation, and integration. So it's called an operational amplifier. The amplifier looks like this. Its circuit symbol is like this. This is its signal input. This is the power supply. The earliest amplifier had two power sources, one positive and one negative. This is its output. From the perspective of circuit symbols alone, this thing seems very simple, but its interior is extremely complex. This is a very classic 741 operational amplifier. Did I make you dizzy? It's okay. Even if we can't understand it at all, it can also be easily applied to create many beautiful things. Just like we don't understand the manufacturing principles of smartphones, but it doesn't affect our ability to use it at all. The amplifier is the same. Next, let's briefly introduce its interior. This is the function of each part of him. You see, just the input uses so many diverse devices. These components together form a differential amplifier. This can make the input impedance very high. Also, it enhances the anti-interference ability of the circuit. Its impedance can be considered infinite. That is to say, this part can be equivalent to an infinite resistor. The advantage of this design is that it does not affect the input signal. For example, the signal input to the amplifier is one volts, impedance of one thousand ohms. If the impedance of our amplifier input is very small, for example, one hundred ohms, this will result in a signal input to the amplifier of only zero point zero nine volts. And our input signal is one volts, but now only zero point zero nine volts has been given to the amplifier. So it is necessary to ensure high input impedance. For example, when this resistor is one million ohms, the voltage input to the amplifier is zero point nine nine volts, almost close to one volts of the input. Voltage, so the larger the input impedance, the better. Compared to the high impedance input of amplifiers, you see its output impedance is abnormally small, 
because this can maximize the output current. Finally, let's talk about how to apply it. This is the input signal. If we want to amplify this signal twice, just build the circuit like this to amplify the signal. R1 equals to 10k ohms. The input signal must be input from here. This is the formula for magnification factor because the magnification factor is equal to 2. So finding R is also 10k ohms. This will amplify the output signal by twice. Isn't it particularly simple? If you want to build this circuit, there are ready-made integrated circuits for us to choose from. These are the integrated operational amplifiers mu A 741 and LM 324. The mu A 741 is a type of integrated operational amplifier from abroad, whose internal circuit is similar to our country's F007. The internal circuit of the integrated operational amplifier is similar. The two can be used interchangeably. The mu A741 is a high-performance integrated operational amplifier with high open-loop gain, high input voltage range, high common mode rejection ratio, Overload protection, internal frequency compensation, low power consumption, and easy to adjust for offset voltage, among other features. It is a general purpose operational amplifier with a very strong versatility. Therefore, it is widely used. The LM324 is also a type of integrated operational amplifier from abroad. It is a quad integrated operational amplifier. The pain arrangements for the mu A741 and LM324 are shown in the figure. The main parameters for the mu a741 can be found in the appendix. Here we can see the mu A741 is powered by a dual power supply. The naming method for integrated operational amplifiers in our country is also follows. According to the national standard, the first two letters are C, F. The letters or numbers following C, F are the same as the international standard. The packaging, pain arrangement, and parameter indicators of this type of national standard are the same as international standard. For example, our country's C, F, 441 is completely the same as foreign A D741 Air M741 Mu A741 etc. In terms of packaging, pain arrangement, function and performance indicators and can be used interchangeably for the naming method of semiconductor integrated circuits in our country and the meanings of each part, see the appendix. Some of our models are named according to the standards of the Ministry of Electronics Industry. The first letter is F. The part following F is different from the international standard but the technical standards are the same as international ones. So, how do we measure an integrated operational amplifier to determine if it is good or bad? Take mu A741 as an example. 
use the 500 type multimeter to detect the integrated operational amplifier as follows. Step 1. Connect the red probe to pin 4, ground, and the black probe to pin 1. The measurement is about 1.2 K omega. Pin 2. The measurement is infinity. Pin 3. The measurement is infinity. Pin 5. The measurement is 1.2 K omega. Pin 6. The measurement is infinity. Pin 7. The measurement is infinity. Pin 8. The measurement is infinity. Step 2. Connect the black probe to pin 4, ground, and the red probe to pin 1. The measurement is about 1.2 K omega. Pin 2. The measurement is 6.5 K omega. Pin 3. The measurement is 6.5 K omega. Pin 5. The measurement is 1.2 K omega. Pin 6. The measurement is 6.2 K omega. Pin 7. The measurement is 4.5 K omega. Pin 8. The measurement is infinity. This indicates that the integrated operational amplifier is good. When analyzing various application circuits of integrated operational amplifiers to simplify the analysis of the problem, it is often regarded as an idea device. Let's first understand the idea operational amplifier. The ideal operational amplifier has a very large open loop voltage gain for actual operations which can be approximated as A equals to infinite and E equals to zero. At this point, the infinite gain operational amplifier model can be further simplified into the ideal operational amplifier mode, abbreviated as the ideal operational amplifier model. An ideal operational amplifier must possess the following characteristics infinite input impedance, output impedance approaching zero, infinite open loop gain, infinite common mode rejection ratio, and infinite bandwidth. In addition, connect the reverse input and output terminals of the operational amplifier. The electronic amplifier is in an active feedback configuration. At this point, the circuit can usually be simply referred to as a closed loop amplifier. Closed loop amplifier can be divided into two types based on the input signal entering the amplifier terminal, inverting and non-inverting. It must be noted that all closed loop amplifiers are negative feedback configurations of operational amplifiers. As an idea operational amplifier, it should meet the following conditions. 1. Open loop voltage gain is infinity. 2. Differential input resistance is infinity. 3. Output resistance is 0. 4. Common mode rejection ratio is infinity. 5. Input bias current is 0. 6. Band width is infinity. 7. Input offset voltage, offset current, and their temperature drift are both zero. Ideal operational amplifier, these conditions are somewhat different from real world applications, but they facilitate research, calculation, and analysis. They are relatively simple. Whether it is guiding experimental vertification or analyzing data, they are not affected, just as otherwise ideas or plans. They simplify many problems in reality. They guide us to overcome the difficulties and obstacles in reality. 
and reach the predetermined destination. What is the input-output relation of a single operational amplifier? The voltage transfer characteristic curve of actual operational amplifier is shown in the figure. There are two operating ranges for the operational amplifier, operating in the linear region or the nonlinear region. Since the amplification factor of the operational amplifier is usually very high, the linear amplification range is very small. If appropriate measures are not taken, even a very small voltage added to the input and may still cause the integrated operational amplifier to exceed the linear region and enter the non-linear region to ensure that the operational amplifier operates in the linear region. Deep negative feedback is usually introduced in the circuit to reduce the net input voltage directly applied to the operational amplifier at both input ends. Characteristics of an ideal operational amplifier operating in the linear region. 1. Virtual short circuit. As shown in the ideal operational amplifier, when the operational amplifier operates in the linear region, the output voltage is linearly related to the voltage difference between the two input ends. That is, since the amplification factor of an ideal operational amplifier AUO equal to infinity, UO is a finite value. Therefore, from the above equation, we get this formula, that is, u plus equal to u minus. The above equation indicates that the non-inverting input end and the inverting input end, the potentials at both points are equal. It's as if the two points are short circuits, but in reality, the operational amplifiers A, U, O is not equal to infinity. The potential difference between these two points is very small, so small that it can be neglected. So, these two points are not truly short-circuited, but rather a virtual short-circuit. We call this a virtual short. 2. Virtual break circuit. Due to the ID operational amplifier's differential mode, input resistance RID equal to infinity and input bias current IB equal to zero. Therefore, the current at its two input ends is zero. That is, I plus equal to I minus equal to zero. It's as if these two points are disconnected, but in reality, RID is not equal to infinity. The operational amplifiers I plus and I minus are just very small and negligible, so it is not a real open circuit, but rather a virtual break circuit called a virtual break. Virtual short and virtual break are important conclusions for an idea operational amplifier working in the linear region. They are commonly used for circuit analysis, must be understood and mastered. Characteristics of an idea operational amplifier working in the nonlinear region. If the operational amplifier is in an open loop state, or if the working signal exceeds the range of linear amplification, then the output voltage no longer increases linear with the input voltage, but will reach saturation and enter the nonlinear region. The virtual short no longer holds and there are also two important conclusions at the same. 1. The ideal operational amplifier output voltage, UO, 
has only two possible values. When an idea operational amplifier works in the non-linear region, its output voltage is either a positive saturation voltage, positive saturation voltage UOM, or negative saturation voltage minus UOM. One of two must apply. When U plus greater than U minus U zero equal to UOM. When u plus less than u minus u zero is equal to minus u o m, and u plus equal to u minus is the turning point between the positive and negative saturation states. One, the virtual break still holds. That is, i plus equal to i minus equal to zero. So. When analyzing integrated operational amplifier circuits, first determine what region it is working in, and then use the above characteristics for analysis and calculation. We must learn to use tools to determine the quality of operational amplifiers. This is the only way to ensure the quality of our intrinsic products. In the specific analysis and design of circuits, use the concept of an ideal operational amplifier to simplify problems. The content of this class ends here. Goodbye, classmates.